Hello, hello. I'm going to assist you in setting up a Rust server. So I know currently the settings for Rust have changed and I've made adaptions to that as I found out the hard way when trying to get my servers all running up and going. So the main thing that's changed is they have added another line where it is the server query port. So that's what's changed currently. So a few things that we're going to need is we're going to need Steam CMD. You can just quickly Google it on here. It's going to be the first link for Steam. And then we are then going to drop down to Steam CMD, download for Windows, hit number one. It's then going to download. I have saved it onto my desktop to make it a little bit easier for myself. Once you have it downloaded. I've copied it to the desktop because that's where I want to run it from. We then are going to extract the file and once it is extracted um, it's going to leave it on the... well it's basically going to pop it to the top right. I've just moved it down here. It's going to say Steam, the, Steam CMD, the regular file. And once we've done that, I'm actually, you can either keep the file, just chuck it in your downloads folder or into a documents for if you just want to make one where you can weekly just export it and then grab new uh, or create new ones as you go. In my case, I don't need my main PC, so I'm going to delete it. Cool. Once you have it, you won't have any of these files that are currently installed. You are going to click Steam CMD. It is then going to grab all the configuration files it needs for Steam. Once it's all downloaded and installed, we are going to go log in anonymous. It's going to anonymously connect to Steam, which we need. Cool. Now that we are in there, we are going to go app underscore updates 258.550 and then validate. And this will actually start downloading the Rust server that we can actually use for later on. Cool. While that's actually downloading, I'm going to show you a couple different things when it comes down to the server that we can use. Okay, so one of the other things we are going to need to use, let me close this, is a start file, a start.bat file. To make one of these, we are going to right click on the desktop. Okay, it seems to be... having a few issues for some reason. Okay, we're going to go new, we are then going to go text file, and we are then going to be calling it, let's say, start.bat, or start file, or start server. So I have my extensions currently open when it comes down to my settings. So we are going to show that button and then or ticket and then go here, remove dot text and set it to dot bat. It's gonna ask us if we want to change it, it's gonna be a yes. Okay, I already have a sip, another one on, so it's fine. Cool. So just to show you on how to do that, we are gonna go view and then file name extensions. That's how you are going to find that one to be able to change the file format of the actual text file. Cool. Once you've done that, I'm in the bottom comment section or 
I'm going to in the DM in the description of the video. I'm going to leave this. So start echo start. So that's going to start the server. We are then it's got the start file. We got the batch mode, which is normally I think it's PvP or PvE or game mode or set to nothing. We then have the server port 28015 and then the new one which is the 28016. The reason why they've done this is they apparently need more bandwidth for the servers, so they have added another port. And if you want the app support, we are going to add this line. If you don't want to have the app on your server, you can just exclude this line. I've got a procedure map, and I'm using this seed. I'll leave a link for a seed website so you can pick out the perfect map for yourself. And then also with those seed sizes, you also have a map size. So this is going to be it. So the one I have currently set is 3500. I think max is 5000, if I'm not mistaken. And you can set your max players with this line over here. So I've got my host name, which is currently test underscore ZA. We then have a server description, which I've set here, which then is just welcome to the server. I think I'm missing just the plus sign there. And then serve identity, and that should be all sorted fine. Awesome. And we can actually save this. And as we can see, it is fully installed now. We can just go type in quit. You can hit the X button, but it bugs out on itself. So that's perfectly fine. So we're going to need one bat file for this. And we can also create an update bat file if you want. I find it doesn't always work, um, but you can always give it a try. I like to keep it just to remember the actual Steam code. Cool, now we've got both of these and we've got the Rust server. We can actually rename this folder to whatever we want it to be. So if we wanted to have like Rust server and say number one or something of the sorts we can do it like that we're going to open this file and for the update bat we can just throw it into the actual first page we see for the start file we are going to go steam apps common rust dedicated and then we're going to throw it down into here and then run the actual server for the first time. This is actually going to create it and whatnot, but it's not going to be connected to the internet at all. To connect it to the internet, you are going to have to port forward these I well, these port numbers with the IP of your device you're going to be using for the server. So if you're going to be using an old dingy laptop or old hardware you have lying around, just make sure it has at least about four to eight gigs of memory. More would be preferable. I haven't needed to do any firewall settings or anything like that for the servers on my side. Generally, it's pretty good. So that's not really an issue. But for anything that we're gonna need to port forward, you're going to open Steam CMD, type in IP, config I am not going to run it here because I can never remember if it's got anything important on it and looks like I am fine so for this PC it is the IPv4 number we're going to need so that is what you're going to grab head onto your router find if you have any port forwarding settings you're probably going to have to google or um, google if you're router even supports port forwarding and then if it does we are going to then set it with this IP address we're going to need 28015, 28016, 28018 to be set up for the port forwarding with the IP address so that Steam can communicate with the server itself and once that's done you'll then find that your Steam will well your server will show up on the list for Rust. I find that 
it's very awkward i think it's just the area i live in but um the rust servers don't actually show up on my side for the lists but i can have anyone else connect to it externally but i just connect via the ip address and then you just do what so if i do it so i think my main server is what 192.168. i'm just going to use a random one 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 dot one 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 and do that bracket well colon semicolon 28015 and i can connect via that or i can just add it to my favorites on steam and do it that way cool journey um you can also add things like umod and all those other different fancy nice things but I would definitely check out another person for adding on those different features because he does a lot better of an explanation than I will. And that would be Troubleshoot. I will link him in the bottom. Also, I'll link him his port forwarding video. And then I'll also do his UMOD video at the bottom just so you guys can jump onto it. So if you've been having any issues when it comes down to Rust, it's just because of one simple line of string code that basically stops most of them from running. Hopefully this comes helpful to you and yeah, you guys must enjoy.